How to have multiple rounds in the Unity quiz game. First, let's go to our player progress class, then add the current round variable and set it to zero. This will keep track of the player's current round. Next, in our data controller, go to get current round data, and instead of using the index of zero, we will use player progress dot current round that we just added. To get the player's current round, we can load it from player prefs. So in load player progress, we can add a check to see if player prefs has the current round key. And if it has the current round key, then we can load it from player prefs and set it to our current round. Next, we need to be able to save the player's current round, so let's paste in some code for that. Here's our method, save current round. And it simply takes the player progress dot current round integer property and sets it to our current round key on our player prefs. Next, I'll also add a function to reset our current round if we want to restart the game. So here's our method reset current round. It simply sets our player progress dot current round equal to zero, and then it calls save current round to save our current round to our player prefs. Next, I'll add a method to check if the game has more rounds. Here's our method has more rounds, it returns a bool. It simply checks if the length of all round data minus one is greater than player progress dot current round. So if our current round is not the last round, then we know we have more rounds left to go. Next, let's add a method to get the next round. This method is called get next round. It simply checks if we have more rounds to go. And if we do have more rounds to go, then we increment current round on the player progress object. And then we also save our current round to player prefs, so next time we load the game, we can load from the same round. Now back in our game controller, after our end round method, let's add a method to go to the next round. Here's our method, go to next round. It simply calls the data controller .get next round method, which increments our round. Once we have incremented our round, we will need to reset the variables in the display for the next round. So let's add a method setup round. So here's our start method. I took everything after setting the data controller out of the start method and put it into setup round. Here's our setup round method. It gets the current round data, which will be the incremented round data when we move to the next round. It sets up our questions for the current round. It resets the time remaining to the initial time remaining. It refreshes our display for the time remaining. It resets our player score. It resets our question index. Then I add a method, show player score. Show player score simply refreshes the player score on the screen back to zero. Then we call our show questions method and then set is round active to true just like we did before when we started the game. So after we've set up our round, we set the question display to active again, and we set the round end display to inactive. To allow the user to go to the next round, we have a next round button on the end screen. So when we end a round, we need to decide if we're going to display this button or not. So let's add some code to decide if we're going to display the button or not. So we call our data controller has more rounds method. And if we have more rounds, we set next round display to active to display the next round button. Otherwise, if we don't have any more rounds, then we set next round display set active to false. So we don't display our button, as there are no more rounds to navigate to. Finally, in our return to menu method, let's add a method to set the current round back to zero. So we have data controller dot reset current round which, as you've seen earlier, sets the current round to zero and saves it to player preferences. So when the player clicks the button to go back to the menu screen, the rounds are reset and they can start all over again. Let's change the size of our rounds to two or greater. In this case, I just added one more round, so I have it set to two. And then in round two, we can add some questions, just like we did in round one. So I added four questions to round two. What phone does Google make? What should you do if you're watching this video? Who beat Hulk Hogan at Starcade 97? What state lost out on Amazon's headquarters? We save that to our JSON file. Close that window. Let's go to our assets, go to our scenes, go to the round over panel, and let's display the round over panel. Let's open up round over panel. We're gonna copy the menu button, paste it in there, and we can call the menu button next round button. Let's change the text to next round. And then we can move the next round button up 30 pixels. Then we go to our on click event for the next round button. Go to the game controller and we're going to select go to next round. Let's add a game object next round display. On our game controller scripts, let's drag over next round button to the next round display. Let's select our persistent scene. Start the game. I'm going to start our game. 
What color is the sky? Blue. What is cake made with? Flour. How many ounces are in a cup? And see our timer is at 21 and our score is at 20. And then we click 8, it'll be at 30. So we had 17 seconds remaining in the round. We have a score of 30. My previous highest score was 40. Now we have our options. We can go back to the main menu or the start of the game and reset our round to zero. Or we can go to the next round. So let's click to go to the next round and we'll see our next set of data. So what phone does Google make? They make the Pixel. What should you do if you're watching this video? You should subscribe to the channel. Who beat Hulk Hogan at Starcade 1997? That'd be Sting. What state lost out on Amazon's headquarters in 2019? That'd be New York. And so we got a score of 40 for that round, and our highest score is 40. And there's no next button to go to the next round because there's no other rounds. And we had nine seconds remaining in that round. So let's go back to the main menu, click the menu button. Let's start the game. And we're back at the beginning of the game. So we can click our answers and click on the next round. And then if we close out of the game, when we open the game again, start the game, we'll be at the second round since that was the last round we were on. Let's go through the round. If we click our menu button, we're back at the initial round, round zero. Close out of the game, start the game, and we're at the initial round again, round zero. And that's all there is to doing multiple rounds in the UND quiz game. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.